the ability, even Joel probably. I think you got reasonably strong handles moving and move pretty quick with the ball. So guys like that, even Morgan, and, and even you, um, what are your names? Isaac and Jack. Right, you guys can push the floor and, and I think safely, if they're gonna double team, like we get like, if it's full court man, um, chances are they're just gonna turn you and slow you down. And if, if, if there's like full court pressure extended, normally it's just saying to a big Zach or whoever, come and set a back screen on, on the man, clear, like clean, the, you know, clean them up. And that's normally all we need. We don't sort of need to run a play against the man. But against the zone, the first thing we don't want to do is panic. Never panic against pressure. The pressure nine times out of 10 is the pressure you put on yourself. They're not looking to foul you, they're looking for you to turn the ball over, right? We run what's called three and a half this year, I'm calling it break, but it's exactly the same play. So the philosophy is this, all right? We've got three lanes that look like that, all right? And we have an offensive player here, doesn't matter which side. Offensive player here, offensive player here, offensive player here. So this is against any zone. So if it's a one, two, two, two. Oh, sorry, one, two, one, one. Right, like that. Um, wherever they want to place it, doesn't matter the alignment. Um, if it's a two, two, one, a one, two, two, it doesn't matter. We're in the same, we're in breakup. The important thing is when, they, when do they press normally? When do they run press? After a score. So the first thing we need to do is we don't, we want to always get the ball in as quickly as possible. Best way to be a press is don't let it set up. That's the first thing. I just want to make that common. Right? If we can get it in, get it out, after the score, get it straight in, and don't give them time to set up. But the first thing we do is, so if we got our inbounder here, and say, um, what I do is I have my point guard inbound now. So that would be like, Sammy's the main point guard on this team. Um, other guys, possibly Isaac and Jimmy may find themselves in that spot. So depending who's in that spot, you're inbounding the ball. So you take it out of the basket. Even when they're in a the press, like uh, if we recognise they're in a the press, point guard takes it out. All right? We get it to our two, so our next best ball handler. And, and what he does is most, what, most of these guys are either going to trap on the catch or they want to force it to the side. So we want it on the sideline in this. So they think they're doing, they think they're playing a press against us, but we're actually playing, they're playing into our hands. So this guy is going to dribble to the middle. That's to move the zone, or to the side. So he's going to move. He's going to move. They're thinking of trapping. He comes in. This guy shifts. But the real trick is, is when we get it to here, this guy, these guys can only move up and down in their lane. So really for these guys, they're no-go zones. I don't want anyone on the sideline. You're one step off the sideline. All right? What happens if the ball goes this side, we are aiming to get the ball to this guy here. Now, it might be that that passes on straight away, because remember, these guys shift, these guys shift. All right? So this guy is normally deep. But if you recognize it and you can throw the pass, as soon as the ball comes in this side that goes to that side, this guy can go. You don't go all the way, you can go to a, to a distance that they can make. Does that make sense? What we're looking for is normally hitting the ball, we can either reverse it and hit the middle, and then he kicks it on, or we can lob that to there. That is a rare pass, but if you, if, it can be done. The idea is, is the zone, doesn't matter what the zone is, it's gonna shift, and what we want is a three on one or a three on two fast break. Nine times out of 10, that's what we get out of this. And if you go up on, and I said, if you go up on YouTube and you have a look at our highlights last year, and Jimmy will attest to it, because he was often in the backcourt with Luke, how often did the pressure really provide any pressure against this? No. Nah. How many times do you think we scored at the other end, <laughs> like off, off a press, because they, they because we beat Shit, mate. Because the numbers, it's a numbers game. So if we know what we're doing, so what happens is if he gets in the pressure and this guy comes in, and they give it to my point guard, he's my best dribbler. Normally, in this case, probably not. No. Normally, all right. So, so he just goes the other side. Play continues, but we, instead of when the ball comes this side, now we're looking to go middle, and we kick it on that side. So we're always looking in the opposite direction to where the ball goes, because we're forcing by going that side, we're forcing the zone to shift, and it's that side of the floor that's open. Against, I'll go on this side now. So against, say it was a one-two-two, two, right? So they're looking at something like that. That guy's normally open. This guy and this guy there. 
the ball goes to the side, these guys have to make decisions of what they guard, but he's still got to shift this way, and he's still got to shift this way, so we're still looking at, at this guy. But they've got to cover the middle. If they don't, it literally becomes one pass, this guy then goes and helps, and then it becomes that. And now we've got, we've actually, he, go, he goes, as soon as he gets the ball, he goes, he becomes receiver. This is where it becomes numbers. It's always going to be three on two or two on one. All right? I can tell you that now. Always. It, it, it just works out that way. It's a mathematical equation. That's what the uh, breakdown is. So we're going to drill it now. One, so, so we start on a baseline play. We'll get the defensive team to set up in a 1-2-1-1. One, 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 and we'll start with 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. We'll get guys three at half. And, and we'll inbound the ball. And you can start play. The other thing to remember after a score too, and this is for the inbounder, you can run the baseline. A lot of teams and a lot of players don't do that. If you feel the passing pressure's on, and you, like, they're not going to be up on the ball in the press, but you can, you can literally run and change the angle and pass it right down the sideline. You know what I mean? Or pass it to the middle. Recognise which of these guys isn't being defended and if you can get past them. Does that make sense? All right. Any questions on that? I know it looks messy. I hope it's not like if you look on that. Did anyone read the playbook on that when I said the press play? All right. Read it. It would make a lot more sense. We're going to drill it now. The idea is, is this guy, these guys are always one step off the sideline. They don't go into that area. This guy wants to stay in this area. They can move up and down in their lane. They can go anywhere in their lane. Like if you need to come and get the ball up the side, like if you're on the sideline, you can run up the sideline and look for the ball. When the ball comes in, we're looking at opposite. So we're always looking at play goes that side, so we're looking to move the ball through that. Okay, through the opposite direction. Does that make sense? Alright, so let's drill it. So let's